Welcome to LeetCode's Blind Created 75, where I'll be solving the top 75 LeetCode questions. This question is called Merge Intervals, and here's the question. Given a collection of intervals, merge all overlapping intervals. We're given a list of lists where each one's going to be a pair of the start and end of the interval, and we want to return an output where everything's merged. It's still going to be a list of lists, but everything overlapping is now just one list. 1, 3, 2, 6 is now going to be 1, 6. 8, 10, and 15, 18 don't overlap, so they'll be the same. So let's look at our approach on how we could do this. The first thing to note is we should definitely sort this intervals. And there's nothing in the question to say that we are given to, it's given to us sorted. Uh, but if we sort it, then we can definitely do this in one pass. And imagine that we had a bunch of intervals like, that looks something like, Here's one interval, here's the second one that overlaps, here's the third one which doesn't overlap at all, and here's the fourth one which does overlap but it doesn't exceed the previous one's end. So if we were to combine these two, it would end up looking like this and this, right? So this would be our final output. Now knowing this, that we should sort these intervals, there's really only three possibilities that could happen when we have one interval and compare it to the next. The first thing that could happen is it could be not overlapping. And we can figure that out by checking the start of the next interval and see if that's greater than the previous end. And if that is, we know that we just need to insert this next interval into our output. Now the second thing that might happen is the start might not be greater than the previous end, but the end might be greater than the previous end. And since we've already sorted this by the starting element for each interval, we know when this happens, we don't need to insert this next interval. We just need to update. So here we do an update. Here we do an insert. And here we do an update. And I apologize for my bad handwriting. I'm still getting used to this white whiteboard here. And finally, the last thing that might happen is the starting point for the next interval might not be greater than the previous end, and the end might not be greater than the previous end. So what happens when we do that, like this fourth example here? Well, then we just pass. We just pass. We, we don't do anything because the previous interval already contains this next interval. So simple enough, once we sort our intervals, then we can just use this conditional logic to create our final output. All right, so let's go ahead and start coding this out. The first thing we might want to check is to make sure that there are multiple intervals, because if there's only one, uh, this isn't going to matter, or if it's empty, we'll have to return an empty list. So if the length of intervals is less than two, then just return it back. Now, next thing we want to do is make sure to sort, and we can do it sorting in place, since there's nothing in the question that says these are going to come into us sorted. Now, for our output, let's start by creating a list of lists for the first in lit index or the first list inside of our intervals. And that way we can just do a loop for each interval. And I'm going to split this up to start and end to make comparison a little bit easier. In intervals from the second element onward. So the first thing we want to check is, is this start greater than the previous one's end? So if start is greater than the output's previous 
1's n, which is going to be the second element, that means we just want to append this to our output. We can do that like this. Otherwise, check if the end is greater than the previous interval's end. Because if that's true, then we want to update our previous interval's end to equal the end here. Otherwise, we know that the start is less than the previous one's end, but the end is also less than the previous one's end. So we don't want to do anything. We can just not do anything there. We just pass on that. Finally, let's return our output. Let's make sure this works. And it looks like our test case worked. Let's go ahead and submit that. And there we go. So the runtime and memory usage aren't great. Um, but this is how I solved it. There are probably better ways to do it. But ultimately, I think the main juxt of this problem is to understand that if we sort this intervals, we could create some sort of logic to do this in one pass, updating our output or inserting depending on our condition. So thanks for watching my channel. Hope that helps. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.